good morning, everybody. And welcome to our service of praise and worship on this, the very last Sunday of the church's year, the Sunday when we celebrate the festival of Christ the King. Welcome, whether you're in church with us or whether you're joining us online. Apologies, we're a little bit late this morning. As you see, we have no screen. Regrettably, the digital gremlins are getting at us again. But I gather you're there on the live stream. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> so will you turn, please, with me to your service sheets. Praise God, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him the glory. Jesus Christ has made us a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father. To God be glory and kingship forever and ever. Grace, mercy and peace be with you. And also with you. Thank you. We turn to our hymn books to sing the glorious hymn, Sing We the King Who is Coming to Reign, number 602 in the Mission Praise books. <clears throat> Thank you. 
please be seated. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude, and to listen to your word with eagerness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart of each one of us. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us. Deliver us from judgment. Bind up our wounds and revive us. In Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself. Forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We turn again to our hymn books, to number 1003, My Jesus, My Saviour.
Please be seated as Sue brings us our Bible reading. This morning's reading is Psalm 46, which can be found on page 570 in the Pew Bibles. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. I've always known that God has a sense of humour, but it's been particularly apparent, as many of you know, I have had vertigo for about 10 days and it has felt like the earth has been moving. Did you hear what the psalm said? Though the, mount the earth gives way and the mountains falls into the heart of the sea, I have been there for 10 days. So, that's a slight aside. This morning we reach the end, or today, we reach the end of the liturgical year <coughs> and the end of our sermon series on Psalms. And our focus is on this well-known, well-loved Psalm 46. I suspect, like Psalm 121 that I preached on last month, Many of you can recite it. I'm not going to ask you this time, though. Psalm 46. It's a community psalm of confidence in God. An opportunity for the whole of God's people to gather together and declare their trust in God who always protects them. Unusually, it's not one person speaking on behalf of everybody, but it's all God's people gathering together in praise. How cool is that? All of God's people gathering together. So, what we're going to do is we are going to read Psalm 46 together. Could you find it in your pew Bibles? It's number five, page 570. If you have to shift around and find one, feel free. We're God's people gathered, whether those of us here in the building, those of you online, those who have been reading at this service sheet, we are gathered as God's people. And we're going to gather now to praise and declare our trust 
in God (coughs) using the words of Psalm 46. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength and present help in trouble. We will not fear though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The commentaries don't know if there was a particular event that gave rise to this psalm being written. But it's likely it was written at the time of national emergency or crisis, a time of threat (coughs) to the nation as a whole. And in response to that threat, the people gathered to declare their faith in God, who is an ever-present help in trouble. So this community psalm is written in response to a crisis and to the faith of the people and their unwavering faith in God's presence with them, no matter what. I've been wondering, in our context, with the many crises facing our community, our nation and our world, the cost of living crisis, the environmental crisis, war and conflicts in Ukraine and other places, the crisis in the NHS, housing, social exclusion, to name just a few. I wonder what would Heacham Parish Church's community Psalm 46 say? What would our Psalm 46 say now? What words, what images would we put together to declare our absolute confidence in God in the midst of all the current crises? The Feast of Christ the King today, when we remember and proclaim Christ's universal sovereignty as Lord of heaven and earth. Seems a good time to think about this, whether corporately or individually, and remind ourselves that whatever's going on in our world (coughs) or in our lives, Christ is on the throne and God is with us. Maybe if you've got some time this week, you could look at Psalm 46 and think about our context. What would you say? If you're good with words, you might write it. If you're good with images, you might draw it. If you're good with neither, you might just think it. What would our psalm be in face of our current crisis? 
Now, although Psalm 46 was written as a community psalm to be read together as we did, it's one that many of us, me included, find much comfort in on a personal level. level. When our world is shaken, maybe by bereavement or illness or other crisis. Holding on to the knowledge that even when life is really tough, and it can be sometimes, can't it? The Lord Almighty is with us. As we turn our thoughts to Advent, I want us to turn briefly to verse 10 now. Be still and know I am God. <clears throat> Whoever we are and whatever's happening in our lives and whatever's happening in our world, our community, we could all do with remembering that verse and acting on it. What a difference could be made to us individually as God's people here in Heacham if each of us spent five minutes each day during Advent and beyond stopping, opening our hands and our hearts and giving God the opportunity to show us that he is God and he is with us. And I mean stopping. When I stop, I tend to tell God about 45 million things and ask him all the questions. This isn't about that. This is about stopping and letting him tell us that he is God. So stop, find time to stop, open your hearts, your hands, and let God show you and say to you, be still and know I am God. And through that, may each of us know more deeply and fully that God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble, that the Lord Almighty is with us, and may each of us find space to truly be still and know I am God. Amen. Thank you, Veronica. There is only one hymn we can sing after that, isn't there? Be still and know that I am God.
Please be seated. And let's do exactly that in silence for a couple of minutes. Just be still and know God. <clears throat> Please stand and take your service sheets to remind ourselves of the faith which brings us together here this morning. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please be seated as our singers and musicians bring us a musical offering. Hide me now. Thank you, everybody. And now we turn to our prayers of intercession as Judith and Terry lead us.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you now aware of all our failings during the past week and in need of your mercy. Forgive us the times we've not done your will and prepare us now for the coming week ahead. This we pray in your precious name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for watching over us, for the love you've shown each one of us during our Christian walk. As you have watched over us growing in faith, we ask that you grant to your church here in Heacham a witness of your love. And so we pray. Lord of Mission, who alone brings growth to your church, send your Holy Spirit to give vision to our planning, wisdom to our actions, joy to our worship, and power to our witness. Help each and parish church to grow in numbers, in spiritual commitment to you, and in service to our lo local community. This we pray, amen. <clears throat> Lord, we pray for those all who are all fearful for the months and even years ahead, as we're reminded daily of the cost of living crisis. Show us how we can help one another to ease the burden of those seeking to provide for their families. And in a moment of silence, let us mention to the Lord those we know in need of our prayers here this morning. Let us pray for our King. Lord, we pray for Charles, our King. May he continue with your grace to follow in his late mother's footsteps and offer good counsel to those seeking his advice and opinion. May he execute his role with fortitude and as the Supreme Governor of the Church of England, we pray that you will uphold him in faith in his commitment to serving you our Lord and Saviour. This we pray in your precious name. Amen. Lord, we pray for those suffering today because of illness, bereavement, or difficult circumstances. In the silence, we name them. Lord, you are our healer. Bring comfort, peace, and love to those we have named. Help them to know that they are not alone in their suffering. Lord, we pray for our world and all its troubles. Give leaders wisdom. Give nations <coughs> peace. And give people a real concern for their environment. Lord, we pray for our families. We thank you for those who have come to know you and who encourage and uplift us. We pray for those family members who do not yet know you or have felt rejected or let down in their Christian walk. We ask that you would be moving and working in their lives and opening their eyes and hearts to who you are and to know you love them. In the place of brokenness in our families, bring healing and restoration. In the places of anger, bring your peace. In the places of hurt, bring your comfort. Thank you for the memories we share. Build on those, Lord, in your love. Lord, help us to live out your message of love and forgiveness in our families, community and church. Help us to love when people are difficult. Help us to forgive when there is hurt, anger and pain. 
Help us to use encouraging words and give us compassion and kindness in our actions. Give the church a vision to reach people with a genuine love and concern, sharing that love within the church. And help us to show a faith and worship that is relevant in today's world. <coughs> help us to be always ready to reach out to people. We may be the only Bible they read this week. Lord, we pray you will answer these prayers in your way and in your time. In Jesus' name, amen. We join together in the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Collect, the special prayer for today, which draws together the main themes and thoughts of today. God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service whose kingdom has no end. For he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Amen. We turn to our hymn books again, to hymn number 85, Come and See, Come and See, Come and See the King of Love.
Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is the gospel we proclaim. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. To you be glory and praise forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. To you be glory and praise forever. When the time had fully come, you sent the Son of Righteousness. In him, the fullness of your glory dwells. To you be glory and praise forever. Do please be seated. We say together, in darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy. Help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to God, whose power at work among us can do infinitely more than all we can ask or conceive. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn is number 681. There's a sound on the wind, like a victory song. Please be seated as Veronica comes to bring us some notices. I hope it won't come as a surprise to you, but Christmas is coming, and it's coming very quickly. Um, we have a very busy weekend next week. On um, Saturday, on the 26th, we have the Children and Families Advent Celebration. We need helpers for that with the different activities. We would like some sausage rolls and mince pies made. And everyone is welcome 
to come and join in the service at half past 11 in the morning um, and to come and share those refreshments afterwards. If you're able to help, please see Linda or Julia and I'm sure they can find you a job. Then on the Sunday, um, while the Advent service is taking place here, there is a craft fair at, um, at the social club and we need people to help please to man that stall during the day. Um, Sue and I are going to set up and then after that we'd like a bit of help please to sell things during the course of the day. In the afternoon at four o'clock we have the Advent carol service by the corner choir. We would like welcomers for that please, people to help with refreshments again and again all are welcome to come and join in that. From next week, we hope we will have some candles to display. You will remember that other years we've had displays of bells and stars and angels. Well, this year it's candles. So they don't have to be those kind of candles. They can be fabric candles, paper candles, card candles. I'm going to knit some. Um, but we would like them <coughs> brought to church as soon as possible please, and then we can make displays of them. Um, so this is the list of what's happening between now and Christmas Day. Um, you will see there are lots of spaces for welcomers, refreshments, all kinds of other jobs. Um, quite a few are midweek as well. So again, those of us who are retired may be able to sign up for some of those. So please talk to Liz or to me and sign up if you're able to help with anything that's coming up over the coming weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Veronica. Will you turn back please to your service sheets for our closing prayers. <coughs> Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among us and remain upon each one of us, now and evermore. Amen. We say together, yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all. Alleluia, alleluia, amen.